Hi, everybody. This is Judy Baj with your town supervisor and welcome to our virtual Fun Day Monday series. In an effort to make sure that our residents stay safe this summer, we're adhering to strict social distancing guidelines and even our Fun Day Monday series has gone virtual. Our 2020 series might look a little different than it did last year, but we certainly hope that you'll continue to join us each week because there'll be new and exciting things each Monday. Fun Day Monday has grown to be a tradition for so many of our senior citizens, and I know I look forward to our Fun Day Mondays every year. With hundreds of seniors attending, we knew that once the pandemic hit, we wanted to continue to host our weekly events, but we needed to develop a plan where we could do this while making sure that our residents stayed safe. So I, along with our town board, worked closely with our Department of Community Services to develop some new and interesting programming for you. Throughout the summer, we will be providing our residents, you, with engaging and fun entertainment every Monday. You'll get to hear from our town board, our town clerk and receiver of taxes about their favorite Fun Day Monday memories. We'll have exercise classes, we'll have workshops, to tours of hidden gems in North Hempstead. There'll be something for everyone with our virtual Fun Day Monday. I hope that you'll join us each week. Today, we have council member Angelo Ferrara joining us to talk to us about his memories of Fun Day Monday. And we also get back into nature with a beach hike at North Hempstead Beach Park and a virtual fitness class. So let's get started for a fun Fun Day Monday. Hello and welcome to a walk down Fun Day Monday Lane. I'm Christina Liu, the Senior Citizen Program Development Specialist for the Town North Hempstead Department of Services for the Aging. And I'm also the producer of our Project Independence and You Radio program. And with me today is the fabulous host of our Project Independence and You Radio show, John Ryan. Hello, John. Hello, Christina. Thank you very much for that. Very sweet. Of course. And today we have on Councilman Angelo Ferrara from the 3rd District. Hello, Angelo. Hello, Christina. How are you? Good, good. You know, we're hanging in here. We can see that Angelo has a fabulous beard that has uh, came out of this, which I think he's pulling off wonderfully. So it, lo it looks good on you, Angelo. Thank you so much. <laughs> How you been holding up? Holding up fine. Just miss, you know, everybody and, and not being in close proximity as we used to. Um, it's, it's different, that's for sure. Um, it's like that movie Groundhog Day. Yes. You know, every, every day is the same. Absolutely. Uh, but I guess, you know, like something like this and John and you with this programming, really trying to reach out to as many people as we can during these times when it's difficult to do it in person. So I, I think this is a great idea. Yeah, well, we're glad you're here. And now what we're really trying to do this is for Fun Day Monday. I mean, Fun Day Monday has been a tradition through uh, the town North Hempstead for over 35 years now. Um, you know, it's, it's thousands of seniors come to, to, to each program every Monday. So I want to know, Angela, what is your favorite memory of Fun Day Monday? My favorite memory, quite honestly, is that it exists. Because every year that we go, and every summer that we spend with the people and watch people change and age and, and unfortunately some people having some difficulties, you're at least being part of their life. You know, I look back to when I was growing up, our senior citizens had nothing like this. They were shut-ins. They really didn't have any communications with other seniors, with other family members, with the community, with the government, and, and their lives were very confined. And I think with what the programs that we offer really changed all of that 35 years ago and opened up a whole new world to them. It took them out of being shut-ins and made them vibrant, gave them something to look forward to, gave them camaraderie. I go to those things and, and I watch people playing cards and 
talking and joking and laughing, and I tease them a lot uh, about <laughs> being there. Uh, but it's 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 such a good feeling. They've become part of my extended family. That that's the biggest thing that I took away from that. It's like all of the people there were well. When I was younger, I could say were well, my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> Now they're my friends. <laughs> I love it. No, and it's really, I mean, you know, we certainly see all the council people and the town clerk and receiver of taxes and other electeds, you know, they come and they walk around. And I think that's what is just so special about North Hempstead is, you know, these seniors really, you do get that connection and that one-on-one -on -one time. And I think that's really what's so special about all of you because you take that time out of your schedules to not just, you know, pop in and leave, but to really, you know, we see you walk around to every table, you know, and have a conversation. And it's a chance for the seniors, especially to feel connected to the local government. And I think that's um, wonderful. And kudos to you guys, because it's, it's something special, certainly. Well, you're right. And that, that, I think, is what's special about our town. Because other places that have gone, other functions in other municipalities, a lot of the elected officials just come for a photo op right. and leave. Well, we don't really do that. We, we get there to be connected. We, we interact with everybody and make sure that everybody knows us. And, and the thing that is the most important to me is the more people see you, the more they get to know you, the more comfortable they feel coming to you with a problem. And even on my business card, on the back of my business card has my home address. Because I want people to know that I'm there for them, whether it's a weekday or a weekend. And if they have a problem, they know exactly where I am. So I think that distinguishes us a little bit differently from some of the other municipalities. We do this out of love, not because it's a program. And that's what I think helps make it as successful as it is. And you could see the reaction from the people when we go there. You no, know, they're really upset if we're not there, if we're sick yeah, or, or we have other functions. Like, what happened to you kind of thing? Well, that in itself is a good feeling. Of course. For people to know that they care enough about you, especially in politics today, to be a political person and know that they care that much about you to want you to be there with them, interacting with them. So I'm very grateful for it, not just because it's an outlet for everybody, but it helps me connect with every one of the people there. Absolutely. And not just in my district, this is town wide. So there are people years ago, we used to run at large. So I used to get elected from the whole town, not just district three. So there are a lot of friends that I know from other parts of the town that I really wouldn't get to see that much if it wasn't for the Monday Funday programs. So. That's perfect, well said Angelo. We're going to divert a little bit from Funday Monday. I want to say two things. I have a question for Angelo. I just want to acknowledge that everything Angelo is saying is 100% the truth. Because I know Angelo. We've interviewed Angelo. He's been a councilman for many years. But he is a person. I don't care who you are. You can give him a phone call. And he may not have the answer you want, but he's going to give you the honest answer. And he's going to try to help you. He can't do something that can't be done but he's going to walk you around it some way, somehow, to try to make you happy. And that's all we can do. Um, but my question now, Angelo, and we were talking about kids even before, do you have a recollection of a summer tradition in your family that you enjoyed, that you might be doing with your grandkids now or your children or whatever? Well, when we were growing up, it was a little bit different times. You know, we lived in... in we came from Brooklyn, and so you didn't have really a lot of room to go anywhere. So our families at that time, the grandparents, would buy a summer place. And this one for us was out in Selden in Long Island, which we thought was 100 miles away. <laughs> uh, but, but it's a lot closer today. But my uncles, my aunts, our cousins, all of our extended family would be there for the whole summer. And the parents, the fathers, would go into the city, go back to work during the week and come out on the weekends to be with the rest of us and, and my aunts and my mother and, and my sisters and brothers and cousins. And it was just such a great time growing up because of that camaraderie, because of that ability to interact with everybody and so many people, because that's also part of the learning process in how we grow, grow and develop our own social skills and develop who we are and who we wanna be. 
And I think that the extension of that with the program we have with Monday Fun Days is that it really brings all of that together with other families that don't have the numbers to get together or the ability to get together or physically can't get together where we provide the resources to get them together and have them experience what I experienced as a child growing up. And it's that interaction. Wow, that's special. And now, Angela, what oh. is something that no one knows about you that you could share with the public? I'm a very shy guy. <laughs> <laughs> really? That, that, really? That, that's, that's really true. When I, when I first started going into uh, my business career, uh, I became a technician. And the reason I became a technician with, actually with Xerox, um, was because I really was a very shy person. I had a lot of difficulty interacting with people, whereas instead of that, I, I interacted with equipment, with machinery, and did my work that way. And then all of a sudden, I don't know where the change came, but I remember I got promoted and became a manager, and I had to make a speech in front of a couple of hundred people. And I practiced that night, but for a couple of nights before, and I recorded it. And every time I recorded it, it sounded terrible. And at three o'clock in the morning, I took the recorder, I threw it on the floor, and I said, that's it. I will never write a speech. If it's not in my heart, it's not coming out of my mouth. And I went out and I made the speech the next day, and it was flawless. And in my political career, I find it really easy to speak in front of groups of people because whatever I tell them comes from my heart. And well, as John mentioned, and I thank you, John, for those comments, because I really take that to heart. If I can't do it, I won't say it. And if I, I can't, I'll tell you that. You know, so, but that's another thing that really makes the town so good is that the supervisor and I and the other board members, we really get along extremely well. We have one purpose in mind, and that's to take care of our people, especially our seniors, especially our veterans. We take that to heart. We work very hard at that, and we will continue to. Even when I was out of office for two years, I went to every veterans organization meeting that I could, because it wasn't about the politics of it. It was about the sincere concern and thank you to our veterans for what they've given us. So. No, and I think I'm that's a very beautiful sensitive message. That's a, you know, that's a beautiful message, and that's really how things should operate. So, and it comes across. Listen, we could. I'm sure everyone can see that. So, thank Wouldn't you. Wouldn't that be great if we could do that at every level of government? That's it. Ah. That would be amazing. What a different country this would be. What a different world we would have. But hopefully, one day we'll get that. This this interview, and I don't mean to deviate. It's more like a fairy tale, and I, you know, and, and you're being very honest, Angelo, because I we know you. But this is what it is. North Hempstead is tremendous, and because it's made up of people who care about everybody, not just your district versus my Absolutely. district. Have a district. Gonna... Absolutely, eighty percent, John. Eighty percent of the people I help aren't even from my district. Okay. And eighty, I don't ask anybody what party they're with. That doesn't even come into my thought process. They're a resident of this town. We care about all of our residents. And you know what? We really haven't had any problems between the elected officials either in saying, well, why are you reaching out and helping somebody in my district? It's about helping, and all of us, helping everyone. Right, right. You know, so it's, it's, it's really an ideal situation. Just one last question, but, and this is a tough one. Is there anything going on in your district this summer? I mean, there can't be. But no. there may be a program. I mean, there isn't. No, it, it, there, there, re there really isn't. And, and I'm looking forward to that ending. I mean, right now, we're trying to open up as many of the restaurants into parking lots as possible so that we can uh, have people go out and enjoy themselves. I know many of the uh, people that do the cooking are not very happy because they haven't been able to go to the I restaurants, know. including my wife. She's threatening that after this is over, <laughs> we'll never cook again. Uh, I'm with her. <laughs> but I do some of the barbecuing, so, so we, we do switch off. And it's, it's a very difficult time, and we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And hopefully this will go and pass quickly, and, and it'll, it'll happen in a way 
that as we open it up, it doesn't cause us to go back and have to retract because of an increase in, in, the, in the pandemic. But uh, there's not really much going on and, and it's frustrating for me not to be able to participate and see everybody right. who I'd like to. Well, thank you so much, Angelo. It's always a pleasure, um, you know, talking to you and just hearing your message. And I look forward to seeing you in person. We're gonna have to bring you on the radio program when we're all allowed to be in the same space together. Um, and just be healthy, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you so much. And I'll be looking forward to the same thing. The, Thank this, you, Angela, second time, this is the second time I've been on your uh, radio show. Or, yeah. or, and it was phenomenal the first time. I feel so at ease and so comfortable. And, and that's because you guys make me feel comfortable. Well, too. that's the goal. Thanks right. so much, Angela. Well, thank you. Thank Have a great time. Well, Stay safe. Take care. Be safe. Ranger Eric Powers, and I wanted to bring Fun Day Monday into your home right here from North Hempstead Beach Park. This is an amazing place to find plants and animals indicative of the beach and learn about these interactions that are out here and also just have some fun out here because I know it's been tough. You haven't been able to get out so much, so let's bring the outside into your home and we can do that virtually right here. So get ready, buckle up and enjoy your time here at North Hempstead Beach Park. There's a live one. The first thing I found is the amazing horseshoe crab. These guys are really one of the most fascinating creatures to me here at the beach because uh, just their history, their long, long history on planet Earth and all their amazing adaptations. Now we've even found fossil remains of horseshoe crabs and in over 300 million years, the, the animal plan, the body plan of this animal has not changed. It's really quite incredible. So they're obviously arthropods. They've got jointed, segmented legs, and uh, um, they have this, this extra part back here, which is where their gills are. Look at this. These are their book gills. And if I lift them up, you can see that this is where they breathe. So those are, uh, those are well protected on their underside here by this hard exoskeleton. And you can see their eyes here on the sides. And they have other little eyes along their body which help them detect day length, actually, because the length of the day is really important for them because they need to know when to come to your beach in order to breed and nest. And that's what these eyes along their, their midline are telling them is when it's the perfect time to start heading to the beach to mate. And this right here is a male, and one of the reasons I can tell it's a male is because of the fairly small size. Um, the other reason is if we look on the underside, the first two feet have this almost like a, how am I gonna describe that? Almost like a, like a boxing mitt or something. So it's this big bulbous sort of hand but believe it or not, that's perfectly adapted to help them hook on to the shell of a female. And the shell of a female is gonna be much bigger. And there's a dead one over here that I wanted to share with you guys. So already, if you just look at the size difference between these two, you can tell that that's a female and that this is a male. Now we know that there aren't gonna be any youngsters here so we don't have to worry about whether this is a young horseshoe crab or an old horseshoe crab so these are only adults and uh, look at the size difference this is a big girl right here my goodness so at any rate he's got to try to find a female a gravid female who's ready to lay her green eggs into the sand up here 
And when he finds one, he's gonna use those little boxing glove uh, mitts to hook on here to her exoskeleton. And she's just gonna drag him around wherever she goes. And then at the right time, which is high tide by the way, um, and this time of year, we're coming right up on a, uh, on a full moon here during the summer solstice, and we're gonna have a super high tide. And that's when the females are gonna drag their mate all the way up to the high tide mark, climb even out of the water then, and lay their eggs. Um, and they're little green eggs that blend in very well with the sand. And then the high tide is gonna go out. And then in a month's time, when we get our next big high tide cycle, that's when the eggs are gonna hatch and those, all those little babies are gonna go back out into our bays and harbors and start their life cycle all over again. Isn't that amazing? So, and by the way, the uh, horseshoe crabs are only an East Coast phenomenon. Uh, you won't find these guys in California or Oregon or any place like that, only here on the East Coast of North America and other East Coasts around the world. The East Coast of Australia, the East Coast of Asia, and, uh, and that has links to their origins. This species first evolved on Gondwana land, which is when all the uh, continents of Earth were one giant landmass. And after they broke up and went their separate ways, uh, these species stayed on those east coasts of all those continents and continue that all these hundreds of millions of years later. Now I'm getting ready to release this boy back into the water where I got him. But I just want to point out how carefully I'm handling the horseshoe crab by the exoskeleton here. And I saw somebody the other day pick, pick up a horseshoe crab by their telson. That's this stick tail that they have. Uh, but there's a very important reason why you don't want to pick up a horseshoe crab by their telson, and that's because this right here, this telson, is their emergency flip-over device. And you got to imagine, as these animals are coming up out of, the, out of the water, a wave could easily flip them over on their back. And at this point, it's very dangerous for them because birds and other animals can get them at their most vulnerable while they're upside down and outside of the water. Their delicate gills are exposed. Their other organs and, and soft parts are exposed. So how is this animal gonna be able to right itself? Well, that's why they've evolved with this emergency flip over device because uh, what they're gonna do is this has a large range of motion because it's got muscles and ligaments in there. And what he's hopefully gonna do is he's gonna bend this back, arch his, there he goes, he's gonna arch his back and look at that. Now this round shell comes into play and it helps to flip them back over. And, and if you are picking up horseshoe crabs by this, that sheer weight of holding their body by just this little thin tail, um, could stretch out those muscles or even break those muscles and, and they lose the ability uh, to use their emergency flip over device. So that's why I urge you guys to just pick them up very carefully, just use two hands, even underneath, look, they're not doing anything to hurt me. So there's, there's really, this is an, an, an innocuous animal, it's, it just can't, it's not gonna hurt you, so don't worry about that. This is not a stinger. Uh, it has no venom or poison. This is just their emergency flip over device. So here he goes, head back out there guy. And they're actually good swimmers once they get in deeper water. Here they go. I hope you live a great long life here in the town of North Hempstead. Look at all these feathers that I'm finding out here on the beach. And I know that each one of these, I can recognize it, is the flight feather from a Canada goose. Look at all these that are washing up. And I just saw a whole 
gaggle of geese out here in the in the harbor behind me uh, with their um, with their goslings. Look at all these feathers. Now, why are geese shedding all of these flight feathers? And if, I see a few other feathers in here too. Look at this is not a flight feather, um, but mo the bulk of these are flight feathers. Well, if you think about it, right now they um, are with their babies. They got to protect their babies. The babies cannot fly right now. So if the if your babies can't fly, then and they're following you around all day, then that means you don't really have a good reason to be flying around right now. So isn't that a perfect time to do your annual molt of your flight feathers? Is now, while you are basically uh, locked up with your kids and can't fly around anyhow, uh, this is when they shed, or molt is the technical term, their flight feathers. So each one of these is a flight feather from a Canada goose. And I just wanted to share with you, you can even, if you want to learn where this feather is from on their wing, you can even see that there's a narrow side and a, and a wider side to the feather. And the narrow side is always uh, forward, whereas the long is always, uh, is always um, uh, what is that, leeward. So this, this would be a right-handed feather on a Canada goose. And the thinner the edge, the, um, the closer it is to the very first feather on there. And there are a few, here's one. Look at this, look at how narrow that edge is. But this one is different, right? This one is a left-handed feather. So you can easily see now how you can tell uh, where the feather came from on the bird. So this is closer to the front edge of the wing this one's back a little bit further. And now as we look, here's yet another one with a, even a wider edge. That's a left-handed and further back. And wow, check this one out. This one almost has no front edge. So that means this was probably the very first feather on the wing. It's called a primary feather on the wing. And that looks like primary number one on the left side. So I hope you can use that information to learn a little bit more about birds and feathers when you're out here on the beach. All right, so, so my trusty friend Gangsta, the therapy dog, has been helping me sniff out some other critters here. And now he's just taking a little break, rolling around. But look at what we found here. We found these uh, clams, all sorts of different sorts uh, of bivalves here, is what I like to call them. And uh, here's the only one I see with uh, the shells opened up, and you get a chance to see why it's really called a bivalve. Bi meaning two, valves meaning shells. So it's got two shells on it. And, uh, and they, of course, everyone's familiar with the fact that they can open and close those shells. They even have a foot that comes out and can help them dig down into the uh, sand or mud. But the reason I wanted to talk to you guys, oh, here's another one with two shells. The reason I wanted to, to highlight our bivalves is because they are so vitally important for the health of our bay out here. And when you see these shells, I mean, try to appreciate these animals for what service they do for us and our bay. These are the animals that are filtering our water here, our seawater, and uh, they can process just uh, tens of gallons of water a day, filtering it out, removing the algae and, and other uh, small critters that are living in the free-floating water, and then ejecting perfectly clean, clear water. And so we are thankful for these bays that we are not completely overgrown with algae and having algae blooms and stuff like that. These are the animals that are keeping the bays clean. So we have a lot to thank uh, for them. And we, as, as residents of the town of North Hempstead, it's up to us to be careful about what we're putting on our lawns, making sure that we're using organic fertilizers and not artificial ones, because the artificial fertilizers can 
bypass your grass, go into our groundwater and come back up into the bays, which makes too much water uh, saturated with nitrogen and, and growing too much algae for even our clams to digest. So it's important to, for us to help nature maintain a balance so that uh, we don't get algae blooms. But if we can keep it in balance, then these clams are happy to, um, to keep the rest of it under control. All right, well, we just came up off the beach and found a nice shady spot here. And uh, after a little swim and helping me look for some critters out there, uh, we decided um, to wrap things up with some artifacts that I found um, uh, from the beach and also garage sales and stuff like that. And just to explain what else is out there that maybe you're not seeing and uh, not only can I hear the osprey, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but uh, there's been an osprey flying above us, and their call, they kind of have a... <laughs> kind of a call. And uh, so be listening for that when you're out on the beach. But also, uh, in the water, there's other things that you may not realize that are out there that are very exciting. And we've seen things like seals in our waters and sea turtles. We've seen whales and we've seen sharks. Just amazing stuff that's out there. And I brought some props here to share with you uh, some of the other things that I found on the beach. This piece right here is obviously from a sea turtle. This is a sea turtle shell. So unfortunately it died and, uh, and the rest of it has probably decomposed, but I was able to recover this bit of turtle shell uh, from, the, uh, from the sand. So that's a really cool find right there. Um, also, this washed up on the beach and uh, whoo, yeah, it still kind of smells a little bit. But, uh, but this right here is called baleen and baleen is uh, the tooth, this is teeth you might say, from uh, some of the baleen whales, like um, uh, humpback whales and minke whales. Um, they don't have teeth like you and I do. Their teeth are long, like this, like long plates, hard, on, hard sharp edge on one side, and soft bristles on the other side. And this is their filter system when they eat. So these baleen whales are filter feeders. So what they'll do is they'll gulp in a, uh, about a, I don't know, think about a living room, the volume of, of water that could fill a living room. And when they gulp, that's about how much water goes into their mouth. And then they close their mouth, but not fully, so that when uh, their tongue comes pushing up, it has to, it'll push the water through this and out the other side. But what this, what these little bristles are gonna do is filter out the small particles of food, the shrimp and small fish that they just gulped in. It's gonna, they're all gonna get stuck right here while the water escapes. And then that tongue again comes through and licks down on this and they swallow and then they're ready to gulp another huge amount of water and do it all over again. So baleen is a very effective structure for them to be used as substitute teeth. But there are toothed whales out there. And uh, we were lucky enough uh, a few years ago to be able to film the uh, three beluga whales that swam down here from the Arctic and right past the town of North Hempstead out here. And those are toothed whales. And we have many examples of, of teeth from these uh, toothed whales. Um, these happen to be from sperm whales, uh, we think, not really entirely certain, but when these teeth were, were harvested or collected, then somebody then took them, probably with a pocket knife, and carved them with intricate details. And back in the day, there was this thing called boot polish, and after they were done carving, they would take boot polish and wipe it over with the, the polish. And wherever there was the carving, it would 
um, it would hold that polish and be uh, black. And so you can then see these intricate carvings on the teeth that are left behind. And this process of carving them and putting the polish on them uh, is called scrimshaw. And this one even comes with a little inscription on it that says, taken in the Arctic Ocean, 1850. So uh, obviously we don't hunt whales anymore, thank goodness, but uh, the remnants of whaling still exist. Um, we have other residents that live out in our waters, and that's the sharks. And they've been here for thousands of years, uh, right along humans, and we've never really had any problem with that. So don't let that worry you, that we might have sharks in our waters. They've been here all along. Maybe we just didn't know about it before. But sharks are fascinating creatures too. Um, they don't have bones in their body, and they are true fish, which means they have gills. However, whales, are mammals. So they have bones um, and teeth and they breathe air, which is why whales have to surface to breathe and sharks don't. So sharks are fish. Uh, but something else they have is um, cartilage. Uh, we do have cartilage, mammals have cartilage too, but uh, that's all that sharks have as a structure is cartilage. So eventually one day this jaw will decompose and we'll just be left with these teeth uh, and that's usually all we find of sharks is their teeth, by the way. But, um, but what teeth they have, if I flip this around, you can just see the row after row of teeth, replacement teeth. So as the outer one breaks off, there's another one that will grow right into its place. So it's just an amazing body design that uh, sharks have for survival. And then lastly, there's always the unknown that you can find here at the beach and I found this thing it's got some it's got some sponge on it it's got some um, uh, some other little uh, like corals on it and stuff like that but really I don't know what this is and I'm okay with that I'm okay with having a mystery item from the ocean not everything has to be explained or identified so I encourage you guys at some point to get back out on the beaches and discover and explore for yourselves. So once again, I wanna thank you for joining me for this virtual tour of North Hempstead Beach Park. I realize this year is pretty unprecedented and maybe you didn't get here to the beach yourself. So I'm really happy that I was able to bring the beach into your home so that you can still enjoy this beautiful place. And I know one day soon, you're gonna have a chance to get out here and visit it yourself. And when you do, I hope I'm here to welcome you to this beautiful beach park. Hope all is well today. My name is Margaret. I'm here to do a total fitness video with you. Please make sure you have some water near you. We will be using weights, a ball, and a band. If you don't have those props, it's okay. You can do without. Also make sure if you need to modify anything that I'm doing, please modify. And if you need to take breaks, take breaks. We're gonna start with a short warm up. Feet shoulder width apart, arms up, and we stretch one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Nice long stretches. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's stretch one, two, three. Slightly bending your knees. Five, six, seven, eight. Again, long arms. One, two, pulling that belly back. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Stretch forward. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to go across the body and one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, seven. Let's start over again. So one, two, three, four. Nice long stretches. Fingertips up, step side, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. Let's go across the body, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, eight. We're gonna tap that tush back and down and up. So we're doing little sit squats, very small, pressing the buttocks back, pulling the belly button into your back, breathing, exhale, and one, and two, and three, and four. Make sure the knees stay over the ankles, pushing the buttocks back, pulling the belly button in. Good job, stay here and just hold it and come up, shake it out and tap. Two, three, four, right in front of you, five, six. Let's start doing bicep curls with the tap and one and two. Again, standing tall, belly button in, five, six, seven, little lift and one and two, pull it back, and four, and five, and six, seven, eight, let's press, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Good job, shake it out. Let's just roll our shoulders back a little bit. Good job, guys. And a little forward, so we have to lift them to pick them up, to roll them forward. And now we just do one right, one left, one right, one left, one right, and left, and right, and left. Good job, shake it out, shake everything. Excellent, so let's pick up our weights. And we're gonna start standing. Our knees are slightly shoulder width apart, arms are down, halfway. We're gonna do bicep curls and one, and two, and three, and four, five, six, seven, eight, again, and one, and two, squeezing back, three, four, pulling that belly button in, nice straight backs, seven, one more set of eight, and one, and two, and three, and four, and five, make sure you keep breathing, seven, and eight, we're gonna take the arms up, two, three. So the elbows are just slightly lifting up, up, up again. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, seven. Keep breathing, knees are slightly bent. One more set, two, three, four, five, six, beautiful. Seven and eight, holding here, go out, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. Just a little bit back, keep your elbows close to your body. Again, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. One more set. So if you notice, we're doing three sets of eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Beautiful, drop your arms, roll those shoulders back again, and forward. Okay, we're going to drop all the way down. 
So now we're into the obliques, the side of the stomach, and down the waist. And down, just a nice little stretch for now. And down. Yep. And one. And two. And three. So we try to drop the weight. Five. And six. And seven. And eight. Again. And one. And two. My knees are slightly bending. And four. And five. And six. My belly button's back. Seven. One more. Again. And one. And two. And three. And four and five and six and seven and eight. Beautiful. Shake it out. Shake it out. Okay. So we did a little bicep. We little a little bit in the core. We're going to take a little bit more in the core. Just by holding the hands up, we're just going to twist one and center. And two and center. So twist and center. So our hips always remain forward. And one, and center. And two, and center. And three, and if you notice, my knees are always, always slightly bent. My belly button is pulled into my spine, so I support my back. <sighs> Breathing, six, seven. Now let's take the center out and just slide from side to side. Nice and easy, little twists. Get some activity going in the belly, in the waist. Twist, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and eight. Beautiful, shake it out. So at this point, we're going to sit. If you prefer to remain standing, you can remain standing, that's fine, all right? So we're gonna go into the shoulder, into the shoulder by arms up, now, when I'm sitting, I'm making sure that I'm flat on that seat, my feet are on the floor, my belly button's back and my shoulders are down. I'm going to press up and down and two and down and three and four. So I'm thinking wrist, pull my elbows. Wrist, yeah, yep, and eight. And second set and one, pull and two, pull, sitting up tall, all my weights out of the seat, and four, exhale, five, and six, beautiful, seven, and eight, one more set, press, one, and two, breathing, and three, and four, four more, we've got it, and five, and six, Nice, seven and eight, drop it down. Good, roll those shoulders back. Nice and easy, go forward. All right, so we went in the shoulder. Now we're going to go to the back of the arm. So standing, we did some bicep. Now we're going to do tricep. So with that said, I take my weights and I double them. If you don't wanna do that, you don't have to do that. You can just hold one. And if you don't have any weights, that's fine too. We want to take our hands behind our head. So our elbows are close by our ears, and we're going to take the weights and we're going to go up and down and squeeze, release. Each time with a breath and up and down. Again, and down and up and down. Good. Keeping the elbows close to your head. Good job, guys. Don't forget about your posture. Keep your belly button into your back. Squeeze and squeeze and up and down and up and down and seven and eight more. We can do this. Squeeze, tighten that muscle and two, tricep and three and four and five and six, beautiful, and seven, and eight. So now we're gonna hold it here and little pulses, two, halfway, and quickly, and five, and six, and seven, eight more, you've got, and one, and two, and three. Keep breathing, four, sitting up tall, belly button back, seven, one more, you got it, and eight, 
and seven and six. Shoulders back. Ta, ba, ba, ba. Nice. Okay. Good job. So you can take a little stretch across the body. Open that arm. Yeah. Hold it. Okay. Good job. So we're going to add our arms are here. We're going to bring our knee into play now. Two, three. So here's the lower abdominals right under that belly button. Every time we lift the knee, we squeeze the belly button back. Two, three, four. So right now our arms are just hanging. Six, seven, eight. We're going to go one, two. Add those arms. Three. Now this is called a hammer curl. So our weights are coming back and back again. Pull the belly button in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more set. Pull it back. And one. Stretch. Two. Stretch. Three and four. Squeeze back. Five and six and seven and eight. Very nice. Shake it out. Take your weights. You can put your weights down. Grab some water if you need it. We're going to pick up our ball. If you don't have a ball, that's fine. No worries. Okay, so with our ball, we're going to go back into our abdominals, sides of the belly. We're going to do what we call paddling, right? Rowing, however you want to think of it. If you were in a rowboat, you'd have to paddle and push to get yourself moving, yeah? So every time we go back, we engage that core, side of the stomach, pull back, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight again, and one, and two, and three, and four, breath, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, good. Let's try it with just one hand. So that means you have to transfer the ball from hand to hand. But with that, we can get a little deeper. So you can drop lower, you can go back further and get more into the side of the stomach. One, and two, and three. So you gotta really scoop down to connect, to engage the sides of the belly again and one and two and it's good eye hand coordination we got to watch what we're doing and three we're breathing four and five six and seven again and one and two and three and four a little twist and five and six and seven and eight Beautiful. Okay, shake those legs out again. Make sure you're seated properly, okay? You're sitting, all 10 toes are on the floor. Heels are down. You're sitting up tall, shoulders are back. Let's push. Two, three, push that ball away. Five, six, seven, eight. Let's add the up and the out. The up and the out. So if you don't have a ball, you're just using your arms. Up and out and up and out again and one and out so each one is counted as one so this is three and four and five and six out and seven and eight good hold it there all right so we're going to take the ball we're going to put it in between our legs, not too high up and not in the knees, okay? What we want to work is our inner thigh. So by doing that, we have to get it in the right spot. Excuse me. You can either hold on to your chair or you can bring your arms out. Whatever you need to do, you have to engage that ball. You squeeze it to, I like to hold the chair because it, it makes me think that I have to sit up tall. One two, three, four, yes, five. As if there were two hands on the outside of your legs pressing in. And one, and two, and three, and four, 
and five and six and seven. One more time. Squeeze that leg in. Two, both legs. Three, four. Feel the inner thigh engaging and waking up. Seven, eight. Again, and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Now hold that last eight. Now I want you to sit up tall, squeeze those legs together as hard as you can. Breathing, 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 shoulders down. Don't hold your breath and let it go. Good job. So right, right in there, we got that work going. All right, so we're gonna do one more with the ball. We're gonna put the ball back there. You don't have to really squeeze it tight, but squeeze it tight enough that it doesn't fall out. And we're going to try to do some leg lifts with the ball in between the inner thigh. Again, you can hold the chair as you're doing them, or you can bring your arms out however you want to do it. I'm not going to count these because I want you to go at your own pace. If you need to go slow, go slow. If you need to go a little quicker, go quicker. But in any way you're doing it, you must engage that belly button. So every time the knees go up, the belly button is going to press back into the spine. And two, and three, right. And four, I'm counting only for rhythm right now. Seven, so that's one way. Or you can go one and two. You can stop in between, right? Or you can go quicker up. Two, three, four. You can balance five, six. Squeezing the thighs, pulling the belly button in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I know I said I wasn't going to count, but I think it always helps. Okay, shake it out, shake it out. Stretch one leg out, stretch one leg out, bring it in. And so we're not doing anything with the ball anymore, just the legs all work. So out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Stretch, stretch, bend, bend. Stretch, stretch, bend, bend. Stretch, stretch, bend, bend. Stretch, stretch. Feel more like that. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in. Two more. Out, engaging those quads and stretching the hamstrings at the same time. Beautiful. Shake it out. We're going to put the ball down. If you need some water, grab your water. We're going to do a few standing exercises. We're going to continue working the inner thigh. So how do we do that is we bend one knee, straighten one knee, and come to center. So we bend and we come to center. Opposite arm is going to reach to the side of your leg and come up and reach and up and reach and up. So we're using inner thigh, stretch and up again and stretch. Nice and breath and out and up and out. Beautiful and out. Good job guys. Keep going. And one. How far down you go is up to you. Everybody's flexibility is different, but I want to keep your head up. Keep that head up. Make sure you're looking at me. Don't drop your head down. You can add the arm up and out and up again. Out. Beautiful. And out. Again, if you need to modify or go slower, whatever you need to do, you do that. If you need to stop and take a break, do that too. Few more. Reach out. And one. Ha. And two. Two more. And three. Beautiful. And four. And up. Nice. Shake it out. Okay, let's go behind our chair. Holding onto your chair. So again, if you don't want to hold onto the chair, you can remain standing in front of the chair, behind the chair with arms out. We're going to work the side of the legs up and two and three 
and four. So we're stretching long legs, elongating the legs, using what we call the abductor muscles, side of the legs, and one. You can hold on, three and four, or you could do it with a balance, and six, and seven, and eight, however you want to do it, one, and two, and three. You're going to feel that on the outside of your leg, five, and six, seven, and eight. Good job. I'm going to move my chair up a little, and I'm going to turn to the side for just a minute so you can see what I'm going to do now. Back, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, again, and one, and two. My heel is facing the ceiling, and four, and five, and six. Now I'm engaging my glutes. Back of that tushy, top of that leg, push, and two, and three, and four, standing up, belly button back, and six, and seven, and eight. Good job. So I'm gonna turn my chair around again. So we're gonna put that together. So we're gonna do side, and side, and back, and back. Again, and side, and side, and back. And if you wanna balance, it would be side, and side, and back, and back. Continue side and side. Good job, guys. Breathing or holding on, whatever works for you. Either way is fine. Back. So if you're holding on, it's just kind of like your fingers are there just to make sure that you don't lose your balance or up. Pulling the belly button back when you have to balance, right? You have to really stand up tall. You push your legs. Push. And push one more time. And one, and two, and three, and four. Another way you could do it. Six, seven, and eight. Beautiful. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Okay, so I want you to step back from your chair, reach your arms forward, and get yourself a nice stretch. You can keep your legs straight and reach long. Okay, you want to do a nice flat back and breath out and just hold it. So here we're stretching our hamstrings, keeping your head parallel to the floor and just holding it. Now we're going to come back up. I'm going to walk into the chair a little bit, holding and just arching very slightly arch back. You could take one arm up, other arm up. Shoulders down and a long stretch in the spine and just arch back or no arch. You can just lift whatever works for you. Make sure it's not painful. Anything that might be painful might not be working for your body. If it's a little uncomfortable, that's okay. All right, so we're going to grab our band. We're going to sit down. And we're going to work our band a little bit, all right? So we're going to take our band. We want to work the back part of our arm, our rotator cuffs. So again, we have to find that, find that comfortable place in our seat, right? Tushy is down flat, belly button back, feet flat on the floor. We're going to take our band. If you don't have a band, just extend your arms out. You don't even have to squeeze your hands. You can keep them relaxed. And you're going to think open and forward, open and forward. So it's a press back and a press forward, okay? If you have a band, you make the tension whatever you want it to be. It could be wide. It could be very narrow. It doesn't matter. It's just to you. Same thing. You're going to go open and forward, open. So there's never any slack in the band, open and forward. Push your wrists and now push them forward. So they're going to press away a little bit and forward. Press and forward. Good. So we're engaging our rotated cuffs. Back of the shoulders and forward. Sitting up tall. One and forward. And two and forward. And three. 
breath and four again and five and six beautiful and seven big smiles good job guys again one more set one push forward and two push forward don't slack three push forward and four four more you've got five and six and seven and eight good job roll those shoulders back ah and roll them forward good one more time back and one more time forward okay so same thing with the roll if you don't have a band your arms are rolling if you do have a band we're making circles two so using our shoulders pulling our belly button back and one and two and three and four sitting up tall five and six big circle seven and eight sitting up tall and one and two big circle three and four beautiful and five and six and seven and eight so now we have to reverse it and one and two so our circle is coming in toward the chest down the leg and one and two and three and four breath and five and six and seven and eight again and one and two and three big circle reach long good keep that tushy planted on that seat and seven and eight nice you should feel that a little bit in here you work in a little bit the back and just by sitting up tall our posture is so important pull that belly button into your spine always supporting your lower back so we're just going to take a nice little stretch breath 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 and over and these are lateral stretches so you want to keep the shoulders down in the back lift and go over good and up and over so again how far down you go is up to you more out i like to think of lengthen okay we want to elongate we want to pull the torso up from the hips but maintaining the shoulders down and breath and stretch good job come up drop it down so you can put your band down all right what i'd like you to do is i'd like you to pick one leg up and hold it so just hold it but i want you to sit up tall and i want you to think of bringing your foot up what we call flex and point and flex yes we get a nice stretch back in the ankle in the calf area and we're really working the foot press through to your toes toes up toes down sitting up tall good breath a few more back and forward so at this point we're going to rotate our ankle good job and rotate it the other way beautiful flex it back point it out bring it in and down take the other one same thing raise your knee if this is too much you can just leave it on the floor and do it same thing there's always a way to modify so i like to just put both hands underneath kind of hold them support my knee by pulling my knee back to my chest and flex and point and flex so my stomach is still working always working my belly button is always engaged it's never just hanging out okay two flex back and point good and flex really move those toes back and stretch them forward yep you want to feel the back of your ankle waking up and you want to feel a little bit going on in your calf and forward and back and forward and back and forward so here goes that circle little circle yeah let that ankle get some play in there beautiful go the other way and then flex back point it out bring that knee in and bring it down good job shake it out so let's take a hamstring stretch 
holding onto your chair, stretch your foot away, and just allow your body to come forward. Not too much, you don't wanna fall out of the chair. Make sure your tush hips are on the chair. You're just leaning forward so you're getting a nice stretch in the back of your leg, your hamstring. Good, breath out. Good job, guys. Come in and do the other side. So flex, same thing. We're leaning our torso forward, holding on, just gently holding on. Just make sure you keep your tush on that chair, flexing your foot, stretching your hamstring. Breath out and bring it in. Good job. So let's stand up. Nice work here. All right. So we're going to take a deep breath in. Exhale out. So again, deep breath in. Long, long fingertips and out. So we bend our knees a little, stretch, and bend our knees and lower. One more time, stretch, and lower. And as we begin, let's finish one, and two, and three. Long stretches, four, and five. So as we're finishing up here, make sure you know that you did an almost amazing job today. Seven, that you are awesome. Yeah, you're the best. Seven, eight, stretch forward. One, two, I'm here for you. We will continue to stay strong, to stay healthy. Yes, stay positive. Five and six and seven. And this one we did in the beginning as well. And two and three. So we finish as we began. Five and six and seven and eight, breath up, palms in, my heart center. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with me today. Thank you for doing a great job. Remember how much you're loved. I love you. You are protected. You are safe. Stay positive. Stay strong. Keep working. Enjoy the beautiful weather, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Mwah. Thank you, thank you. Namaste, namaste. Peace, peace, peace to all of you. Shukriya, thank you, thank you. I hope that you had a great time joining us for this week's virtual Funday Monday. I, along with our town board, our receiver of taxes and our town clerk, thank you for allowing us to join you in your homes, on your TVs, and on your computers. We hope to see you again next week.